Welcome to SkyBot Scheduler. This video provides a quick introduction to SkyBot Scheduler, the fast, easy to use enterprise scheduler. SkyBot Scheduler automates processes in your data center, monitors those processes for problems, and notifies you immediately if there's a problem or if there are delays. This is the home page that you see when you log into SkyBot Scheduler. The menu options across the top of the screen provide all of the options that you'll need for scheduling and monitoring jobs, viewing your schedule, and managing the product. If you want to jump right in and begin scheduling jobs right away, simply click on Job, and then click Create Job. The Job Settings page displays which lets you enter details for your job. Here's the general section to create the name and description for your job and specify which server you want that job to run on. Use the Schedule and Schedule Exceptions sections to define the schedule that you want your job to run. Skybot Scheduler includes schedule types for virtually any scenario that your enterprise requires. Use exceptions for holidays or to set the time ranges for jobs to run. The Agent Environment section lets you set the username, the password, and a working directory that the job uses when it processes. You can also add additional environment variables needed by your job. Use the Command section to enter the command or script that you want to run. Simply click the Add button, and the command line will display. Here you can enter the executable or the script or a command that you want your job to run. From here, you can also select one of our built-in functions. The File Transfer function helps you create an FTP command for transferring files across your enterprise. The SQL Server job function interfaces with SQL Server for scheduling and managing SQL Server jobs. The Windows Desktop application lets you launch GUI applications from your Windows servers. Those are the basic settings needed to schedule a job in Skybot Scheduler. Now let's take a quick look at some of the options that you have once your job is scheduled. Right-clicking objects on most pages will give you a drop-down menu with more scheduling options. For example, right-clicking a job lets you copy or delete a job, check the history for that job, or actually run the job manually. From here, you can also set up job monitors that will monitor for jobs that start late, jobs that end too early, or jobs that run too long. Because we include SNMP interface and SMTP for email or text messaging, you can automatically be notified immediately of any problems or delays in your job stream. Right-clicking a job also lets you build a list of prerequisites that must be met before that job runs. As you can see from the list, those prerequisites can be another job, a job monitor that I just talked about, and system events such as file arriving on a directory on one of your servers or a file changing, a directory changing or a directory meeting a, a size threshold, or a process unexpectedly ending on your system. You can also use an SNMP trap that might come from another device on your network as a prerequisite for some type of error recovery job. If that prerequisite isn't met, the job doesn't run, and you are notified. You should be managing your servers by their exceptions, not monitoring them manually for production events. We've got computers that can do that for us. You can try these and many other scheduling options during our free 30-day trial of SkyBot. I'd also like to point out a few of our scheduling objects, which make it easy for you to set up parameters in one place 
and then use them on multiple jobs. Agent environments contain that information that's needed to run your job, including which user to run this under, the password, the working directory, and any environment variables that that job needs. You can set that up one time and use it with multiple jobs. Calendars let you define work days and non-work days, and you can define specific holidays for schedule exceptions. You can also use calendars to create a fiscal calendar so that your accounting jobs will run on those fiscal period end dates instead of a regular calendar date. File transfer systems and SQL Server definitions are created and stored. And the information that is stored is that server information that you need to interface with whatever FTP server you're going to be pushing or pulling files from the type of FTP that you're, you'll be using. For the SQL Server definition, we'll store the instance of SQL Server that you have running on your SQL Server and any other information needed for that. Then when you create an FTP or a SQL Server job, you simply select which system you want to use. There's no need to set that server information up each time. Click on Agents to see the current status and other information as far as the operating system, et cetera, for all of your connected servers in your enterprise. Skybot Scheduler provides graphical analysis tools, including a dashboard that helps identify trends in your schedule, forecasts that will display the schedule for all your jobs over a specific time period, Forecast will also include those dependencies or those reactive jobs and when they are expected to run, if those prerequisites are met. And then last but not least, our job flow diagram. These diagrams can document your entire chain of prerequisite jobs and event monitors in your event-driven schedule. The last feature I'd like to point out is our built-in auditing. Your auditors will love how Skybot Scheduler tracks every change to the database, the job schedule, and each individual job. Well, that's a quick overview of Skybot Scheduler. Please contact us at www.skybotsoftware.com for a free 30-day trial or for a more detailed demonstration of Skybot Scheduler.